Hi everyone, my name is Jeff Starr, this is my channel Not Bad Films, and today I'm talking about this harmonium, which was, uh, this is a Bava brand harmonium, and it was supplied to me by Old Delhi Music, which is a music store uh, that specializes in harmoniums and Indian classical instruments. One of the great things about purchasing a harmonium from Old Delhi Music is that they really know harmoniums because they make them. The Bava brand of harmoniums was started by uh, Nick Dillon, who is also the owner of Old Delhi Music. I think it's a really incredible story. You should check out my interview with him and the, the video sort of about the unboxing about this. You can learn a lot more about the Bava brand there. Nick is incredibly um, well educated on, on harmonium construction and, and everything about them. So much so that after this had arrived and I made my first video, he said to me, oh, you know, we're sort of entering this change of seasons and it's really the time we call it like buzzy reed season where humidity affects the reeds and how they're sitting and you may get some keys that buzz. He was totally accurate down to the day because that day one of the uh, keys began to buzz. And so he sent me instructions on how to uh, sort of reset that. This is sort of normal expected maintenance. If, if you play the guitar, you change your strings, right? Um, I studied the sitar and that instrument requires uh, regular maintenance too. You have to chalk pegs, um, other things, especially related to humidity changes on that instrument as well. So he sent me the instructions and I made a huge mistake and I don't want you to make the same mistake. So that's how I'm gonna start this video. That reed began to buzz and um, it was heading into the, the, the uh, winter holidays. I thought, okay, well, I'm not gonna address this right away. And I sort of let it sit, because I said, I'll get back to it. And then I came back and another reed was buzzing. Now I had, I had put this away in a nice safe, nice safe spot while it was sitting, but humidity does its thing. And I had a second reed that began to buzz. And I thought, oh, okay, well, you know, maybe I should, maybe I should wait until humidity levels out because the instrument hadn't been with me very long and I thought well, there's probably some temperature fluctuations stuff like that I let it sit and then I had a, a third buzzing read <laughs> and then I thought alright I probably should really address this so I wrote to Nick and I said hey I'm gonna shoot a video uh, this weekend to you know open this up like you've sort of told me how to do and, and, and um, fix things <laughs> and he said and I'm paraphrasing here. Um, he said, oh, that's something you gotta do right away because if it sits too long, um, the reed will get sort of fixed in that position uh, because it thinks that is the new position or that is the position. It can become a lot more difficult to resolve the issue. So I have some tools with me. I have a screwdriver. <clears throat> I'm sitting down so you can sort of see me and the instrument at the same time, but I'm gonna stand up now and you'll sort of watch the instrument because you don't need to see me. Uh, I'll play and you see if you can tell uh, which reed is the one that's buzzing. I think it's fairly obvious. Um, again, here we go. You can hear that. The other, well done. Basically, what I need to do is use the different stops and there are various stops uh, here, these little poles will determine which reeds are being activated, right? I'll close one, open another. I'll do the next. And of course you could have the two together. So now, which is it? Okay, that's fine. You can sort of begin to troubleshoot, okay, which set of reeds or is, or which specific reed within the set is, um, is causing the buzz. One of the things I do want to point out is that this would be an, an instrument that would be described as being heritage quality. Being heritage quality doesn't mean that it will never require service, but it's that servicing that makes it last for a generation or two or longer. It has been built to such a high quality that it is serviceable and repairable so that it can continue to live on um, 
beyond just a single user. I think it's time to begin to open this up. I'll put this in a time lapse um, so that you can sort of see what we're, we're doing here. If you are not sure how a harmonium actually works, the bellows forces air into the instrument, which then goes into a chambers down here and the stops, those little poles, open up these little compartments and, and you'll see that there are, there's a smaller one in the back and there is a bigger compartment here. When this opens up, there's two holes here and that allows air then to blow into this chamber here, this lower portion, where of course there's a whole set of reeds. If you open the other stops, it can blow the air onto these top reeds and of course you can open both. That's the, the nuts and bolts of it, really. Of course, you need an airtight seal. If you're leaking air, then you're gonna have problems um, producing a, a solid, consistent sound. Okay, so to find the, the buzzing reed, what you need to do is, obviously, you find the key that's buzzing, right? And then you need to count one, two, the black, so you count white and black keys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then when you open it up, you would count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hopefully that makes sense. And then once, of course, you find that corresponding read, we can then begin the process of resetting it. Now, there's a couple different ways to do this. Actually, remove the read where it is glued down, but to remove the read, and um, that essentially, if it is warped, let's say, because of the humidity change, when you break the glue that's holding it, um, it can unwarp. I'm not sure why they're glued, but presumably, that always they don't always need to be reset and that ends up with a better sounding instrument so in my case i'm going to start from the bottom here and if i close over the other so So now I'm going to open that up. That's one, two, one, one, two, three. We'll then look into the bottom chamber here. It's going to be one, two, three. What Nick's instructions have you do is to remove the two screws. It's one on the bottom, one on the top. Break the glue that's holding this. Then just reset the reed, um, like re-screw it back in. Being careful, of course, not to strip the wood. So I'm gonna try that on this first one. Now to break the glue, I was told to put this, put a flat screwdriver in here, and use that as a wedge to um, break this, the glue, to break this free. I was told it takes a fair amount of force, so not to be afraid. I am afraid. <laughs> okay. There's our reed. Also, there's little, you'll see there's little scrapies, sc scrapies? There's little scrapes on here. And those scrapes, it's my understanding, are, have been done to tune this to get it more specific to accurate pitch. I was told it's just as easy as, as, as simple as putting it back in and hopefully it should no longer buzz. So let's make sure we get it in the right way. Here's a quick little tip um, that I picked up in my years of doing guitar um, you know, setups in a guitar work, stuff like that, is when you are replacing um, screws into wood, place the screw in and lightly turn it the opposite direction until you feel it sort of like click, like fall into the slot. And then you can begin to screw it in the correct direction to actually now go into the wood. But what we will have done by going backwards is waited until it fell into a pre-existing um, groove that's been cut through the wood and then the screw will continue to follow that existing groove and not strip out wood that may have uh, You might not want to lose. So I'm going to try that approach here and hopefully that'll work All right, that seems fixed one two three All right, great. I'm really happy about that. I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat this process um, for the other keys. This one's a lot harder to to break the glue compared to the other. 
Oh, there we go. Now we're just gonna we're just gonna screw it back on. Great. So next is to do the, the key directly one above that. Oh, that one came off nice and easy. This is the hardest part is getting the screws back in because there's it's so close to this bar here. And it's hard to see. <laughs> Earlier I was talking about like this type of maintenance and I referenced that it was sort of like changing maybe strings on your guitar, like just regular instrument maintenance you might need to do. But in actually I sort of thought of a better analogy would be that this is like having to reset your truss rod on your guitar, right? If you've, if you've traveled or humidity's changed um, and you need to just sort of readjust the truss rod. And unlike a modern instrument where the truss rod adjustment might be up at the top, um, really easily to get to, this is sort of like more like a vintage style strat where you, the truss rod, you have to take the neck off. Clearly I like guitars. <laughs> This was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I'm, I'm really, I thought it was going to take days and it ended up uh, taking me maybe an hour. I was like, I still got to put the top back on, but um, yes. So if you want to support me, please uh, like, comment, subscribe. And I also have an Etsy page where you can buy prints of my artwork. And there's a Patreon where you get early access to videos and you behind the scenes and how this, no one's running this camera and it's made today really hard because I could have used a second person. All right, thank you so much for watching. Go outside uh, or don't go outside. Just whatever you do, go make something. Bye.